Live from the hot air balloon capital of the world, this is Balloon Fiesta Live. Powered by XTO Energy, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. It's the Siesta Edition. Live and direct from the home studio near Shreveport, Louisiana, and studios of Public Access Channel 27 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, here are the hosts of Balloon Fiesta Live, Siesta Edition, Glenn Moyer and Art Lloyd Jr. Good morning from the west side of Albuquerque. This is pilot Ted Mays and pilot Tristan McLean. We just got done at Joe Harris on day one of the Fiesta Siesta. Good morning, Balloon Fiesta Live. We are up here doing a Dawn Patrol flight with Matthew Grody in Jester. Hey, with Balloon Fiesta Live. I'm Morgan Chando. I just want to give a shout out to Glenn and Art uh, on Balloon Fiesta Live. Just want to say thank you to all the first responders and all the essential workers and all the frontline workers for what they're doing. Uh, and especially in this pandemic time, we just want to wish everyone a safe and happy day. We will see you next time. Thank you again. We are in Montana and Missoula. Missoula, Montana. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, Balloon Fiesta Live. We are coming to you live from Time Flies, trying to hit Balloon Fiesta Park. Hey, everybody in the world of Balloon Fiesta Live. Say hi, crew. Good morning. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to the final Sunday, the last day of Balloon Fiesta Siesta live uh, in Keithville. Yeah, Keithville, uh, Louisiana. Yeah. You forgot just, where you are already. Uh, no, I was just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, having a bit of fun with the uh, Missoula, Montana folks. Oh, there you having, go. To, having to check where we are. I'm Glenn Moore. You're live in Louisiana and just on the other side of the monitor there, uh, my longtime. Uh, friend and partner now, uh, Mr. Art Lloyd Jr. Well, partner for five years now. Yeah, yep, there you Something go. Something like that. Yeah, anyway, all the way across the, the other st the state of Texas, as you li like to said all week. Yeah, we are certainly socially distanced uh, this year, and uh, it's been fun. But um, yeah, I look forward to getting back on the rooftop studio and having you where I can nudge you when I need to. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, somebody posted to uh, one of our uh, YouTube or Facebook last night. After I posted a memory on Facebook of us all bundled up up on the rooftop studio, and she said, you guys sure look a whole lot more comfortable this year than being all bundled up. <laughs> yeah, we are a lot more comfortable, and I was a little worried about wardrobe this morning. I wanted to wear this uh, Balloon Fiesta shirt, but was uh, concerned that it might key through. It does blend well with our XTO background. We are sponsored by XTO, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil, but I was afraid it might green key uh, and I would disappear, but fortunately, there's enough blue in this shirt that it's working well. It does, although that picture you posted a few uh, a few weeks ago, the test, where your shirt <laughs> did key out, and you had the XDO Balloon Fiesta Live logo all across your shirt. My yeah, wife I'm, wants I'm, a shirt like that now. I was going to say, I think we could probably add that to the merchandise and, and have those XDO shirts for sale. <laughs> I think so. Hey, like you said, uh, today is the last day of what would have been the 2020 Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And so we are going to uh, relive some of those memories from last year. We're going to look forward to next year and getting, this has been fun, but it's time to get back to doing things the, the right way, if you will. Yeah. And we should have some uh, video. It looks like it's going to be a nice morning to fly. Some weather moving in later today, so we have to be careful of what's going on with that. But we should uh, hopefully have some balloons up in the sky as well. No organized event. Um, a little club competition might be happening out in Rio Rancho, and we'll see what happens with folks that might be flying. But uh, we're going to have a great day as we wrap up the 2020 Balloon Fiesta Siesta. Yeah, I was just peering over my shoulder out the window of my office here, and the sun's coming up. And uh, I live on a little small uh, private grass airport here in Louisiana, and it's not unusual that uh, we are a favorite takeoff point for a lot of the local balloonists. So I was just kind of peering and listening to see if I heard any inflator fans running this morning, but I don't. Uh, I know uh, Joey uh, Scarpinato, one of our local pilots, he's actually out in Albuquerque and has been all week long. Um, so I guess there won't be any flying from our airport here this morning, but we'll have balloons in the air out in Albuquerque, I'm sure. Yep, and we'll uh, we get a camera out to them because they've spread out. We'll see what we can do about bringing those to you. We did start the show with uh, some clips from uh, some of our good friends that have sent yeah. us some shout outs over the uh, over the week here. Ted Mays, Tristan McLean, Morgan Chando, who can't remember where he is. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So uh, we appreciate those guys uh, sending us the shout out that way. We got tons of pictures and video from literally all around the world as well, which we've been rolling in our pre-shows. And uh, we've updated those every single day, which reminds me the fact that while we're live now, all of our previous shows, and this one will be too as soon as it's over, are archived and available from BalloonFiesta.com. You can go back to Facebook and uh, YouTube to find it as well. Simplest way though, BalloonFiesta.com, click on Balloon Fiesta Live link. And here are all of our shows, not only from this year, but from last year and the year before and the year before. So uh, lots and lots here. of shows. <laughs> well, yeah, a little late, Ranger. Could you be on time next time? Yeah, he didn't get the crew call this morning. So, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Looks more awake today though. Well, he's been outside. He had a quick run outside. He's a little damp and a little chilly, but um, yeah, he's uh, he's a little more alert today, perhaps. <laughs> there you go. We've already had calls to uh, have a you know a ranger pins made for next year. So if you're coming to Balloon Fiesta, you might want to look me up. We might have something special for you. There you go. That would be great to see those. And of course, we're already talking about redesigning the Balloon Fiesta Live pin for next year. That just is indicative of how far in advance things happen about these conversations. It doesn't just, oh, gee, it's the 1st of October, let's have a fiesta. Um, yeah, we plan on, in fact, we're already working. We've got countdowns already going until next year. And we're gonna talk about that later today with the Director of Operations for the Balloon Fiesta, Sam Parks. But I think it's time to uh, get some balloons and some pictures of balloons in the air and let's how the whole day gets started. So let's take a look back at the final day of 2019. Hey, can you do this one last time for everybody out in the wild world to see us? Let's welcome Balloon Fiesta Live to the tower. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> it's a fantastic coverage we're getting. There's over 38 hours on the YouTube channel and over 661,000 views as of today. And those numbers will only go up because you can link and share those with all your friends to see. And or you, when you get back home, can go back and look at previous flights and activities. It's a great way to share what we do here to the wild world. Thank you, uh, Balloon Fiesta Live, for being here. The crowds that were here were tremendous. One of the best days we've had for a weekend. And you all know it. You all were out there amongst everybody. But it was a fantastic day, great flight. And then we end up yesterday evening with a fantastic glow. Thank you all for yesterday's activity. <laughs> now how about the fireworks that we put on five nights in one week? That is fantastic. All right, let's do a little uh, weather update from Brad. All right, good morning, everyone. So uh, I'll start off with an image of the inversion this morning, and you can see that we're dealing with uh, a nice drainage and it's concentrated in the right in the near surface layer in that blue layer. And then above it, it's just a real graduated inversion if you look on the far right hand side of this, of this image. That comes from us from NOAA. They've been out here all week doing drone coverage. Uh, so we really appreciate having them on site this week. Uh, let's go down to uh, Sunport first. Temperature of 47 degrees, dew point 33. Relative humidity 61%, winds are out of the southeast at 140 at 3 knots, and the barometric pressure is 30.10 inches or 1,020 millibars. Uh, jumping over to uh, double eagle, temperature is 37 degrees, dew point 24. Relative humidity 56%, with, uh, let's see, barometric pressure is 30.11 inches of mercury, and the wind was 320 at 6 knots. Forecast for uh, for basically uh, let's let's go Sunport first uh, and Double Eagle both is run through one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, forecast for uh, Sunport is 140 at six knots, visibility greater than six miles, and skies clear. Over at Double Eagle, 3:30 at six knots, visibility greater than six miles, and skies conditions clear. Uh, so here's kind of what we've got going on across the United States. Uh, I know there's a lot of aces and owls on this map, but don't get too worried about that. The point is is that uh, that system that uh, got really wrapped up and has brought a lot of uh, snow precipitation to the upper Midwest is going to continue to lift off to the north and east and become less of an issue throughout the day. So those traveling or flying back through the, the Twin Cities, maybe this morning might experience a few delays, but I wouldn't expect that to continue as that system works its way off to the northeast. The other concern is maybe a few showers and thunderstorms, mainly across the, the east coast, especially the southeast. 
but otherwise, we're looking at a fairly quiet weather pattern locally here, generally uh, dealing with high weak high pressure uh, across the area, so it should be a very, very nice morning for us this morning. Jumping over to the DTAC winds, you can see that in general, we have uh, some very, very light drainage that's, that's developed in the near surface layer, say over the last half an hour, 45 minutes. And that's pretty typical is when we see the drainage. It doesn't develop typically till uh, right around briefing time or so. Um, looking at, at, at the observations over the last few hours, it hasn't been ideal for the drainage to set up. We, we, we struggled to get the north wind to flow down the valley uh, from way up near Santa Fe. Um, and, and so given, and it, there hasn't been a strong temperature differential between us and Santa Fe. So given that that's the case, I wouldn't expect the drainage to be near as strong as what we've seen the last two mornings, and it should be a really, really great box morning. So uh, general, yeah, so it should be a, a lighter, lighter wind in the near surface layer, and even if you look above that with the southerly flow, that should be very light as well. So really uh, showing you the inversion, the inversion is, isn't that much of a significant issue for us this morning because basically in the lowest 2,000 feet, you should be developed, dealing with uh, five knots or less throughout the morning. So it should be really, really nice. Um, so here's the latest wind information off the profiler. Uh, at 250 feet, we have a wind direction of 13 and a speed of three. At 500 feet, the wind of five and a speed of two. At 800 feet, a wind of 117 at one. Uh, 1,000 feet, wind at well, 150, basically, at five knots. Uh, let's jump up to 1,400 feet, wind 319 at three knots. Uh, let's see here, go down to 1,800 feet, wind 337 at five knots. My weather helper this morning is Jaden McCowan. And he's eight years old today. It is his birthday. Yeah. And he goes to D Elementary School and he's in second grade. So while he does the launch, we'll sing happy birthday. But um, we'll, is there a launch director in the area that will help uh, help Dave launch? Okay, let it go whenever you're ready. Nice job. Okay. Do you happy birthday to you? Happy birthday, dear Jaden. Happy birthday to you. All right. Nice job. So as you heard Brad explain to the pilots this morning, we expect a very nice slow box. As we were looking through the numbers, he was showing the detect winds. That's a wind radar system that measures the wind up and down. And nothing fast up there at all no, today. No, that's very slow. And multiple directions. Hey, we're going to move on to Dawn Patrol in just a moment. But before we do, we've talked a little bit about some, and he has a curious look on his face. We've talked a little bit about some bonus programming. Well, Art is our executive producer. He's the guy that puts this whole thing together, does an amazing job, works tirelessly for 24-7, it seems, the whole nine days. Uh, but he really gets into the music intro here in the mornings. And uh -oh. so we have a little <laughs> behind the scenes bonus program for you. So, Art, enjoy it, my friend. Here we go. Let's well, see, you got to play the music shows with this. So, you know, this is during the open that you're seeing, you know, from Jeff to Live and Center. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shame we didn't have the music, but every time we sign on, you can see I was paying no attention whatsoever, but he is just rocking out over here. And uh, congratulations on a great week. Job well done. Thank you really you. produced an Thank outstanding you. show. Well, it's, uh, it's only because of the great teamwork, great announcer partner, all well, the folks that have helped me with Windfire Productions, and actually all the cooperation of the officials as well, being able to get pilots briefing to yeah. you as well with the uh, folks of uh, Henry Rosenbaum, et cetera. Everyone's been great to cooperate, getting us into target areas. So uh, thanks to all of them. But enough of that. Let's get <laughs> on with the show. Okay. Let's go. It is time for the 24th uh, anniversary edition of the uh, Dog Patrol show, which is brought to you by Route 66 Casino Hotel and RV Park. Don Patrol show. This is Don announced. We are ready for fans on. Don Patrol fans on. So we're just waiting for the uh, final balloons to be cold packed and ready, and the all 
clear from Scott Vesley. Once that happens, um, we'll hear the command for flicker burns just to begin uh, the hot inflation as the pilots uh, put a few short bursts of flame into the uh, envelopes to begin to heat the air. So we just you hear uh, our team leader, Scott Vesley, checking to see if any of his pilots need a few more minutes to cold inflate. Otherwise, I think we're about ready to get the burners and light them up. There's there. the command to line them up. So there goes, and that Rick was the first to flicker burn. It looks like a polar bear and a cub. And a cub. I'll have to ask Rick about that. I don't remember seeing that before. There you see the team all lined up. They're all lined up along row M on the balloon launch field. This is from our north camera looking um, to the south. To the south, essentially from behind the balloons or looking from behind the baskets um, where the envelopes are, are we laid can look out. up their throats. <laughs> Open wide. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the shot where we were seeing the polar bear on the top. Right, yeah. yeah this way we're, uh, we're looking uh, basically downwind. So the wind is coming from the north to the south, as it typically does uh, early in the mornings here, the ground flow. But we're actually beyond that shot. We're on the other side of the balloons that you're seeing here. We're down on the south end of the field. So this is a rather unique view for us. We're actually seeing... We can actually see both sides of the balloons as we watch this because we yes. can see the north end on the monitor and we can see the south end um, as we look up and watch it in real real life. And from a side as well. And from a side view with our camera from the stage, the Main Street stage. So That is uh, team leader Scott Vesley's balloon, the Lighthouse Information Business System. We got you covered from uh, all four sides, or at least all three. All right, Dawn Patrol Show. It's time for our first all burn, ladies and gentlemen. Balloons, let's count it down. An all burn in 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All burn. Looking good. Looking good. Law Patrol team, I want to say regular launch point to regular launch. Individually, no grand adventure. So we just heard from team leader. They have just changed the uh, launch plan. We'll be doing our standard launch here. Dawn Patrol team, can we get an all burn, please? Dawn Patrol all burn in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all burn. Looking good. Looking great, actually. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Dawn Patrol team, you are cleared for your individual launches. Your individual launches with your launch director. See you in the sky. Thank you, Dawn. Great job, team. Everybody, be careful out there. Once again, a reminder, the Dawn Patrol show is presented to you by Route 66 Casino Hotel, and RV Park. And there we go. As the balloons go aloft, you see they have, uh, they begin to deploy uh, their marker lights, which will be dropped eventually below the basket once they get just a little, there you go, see there. the light falling now. Not falling, but being uh, being lowered, deployed, lowered down below the basket as required by the uh, federal aviation regulation. That looks to a friend, probably Rick Jones. It is. And drifting very slowly to the south. Yep. And off the west end, looks like Chuck Schick is airborne. Oh, he is, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, see, I see his marker lights. He's not glowing, so I couldn't see the balloon for a moment. 
There he is. That's Chuck right there. So launching from both ends this morning. There goes Tim Cloyd. Yep. Flying Gloria Scripter. Tim is a, a member of the Board of Directors of the Balloon Federation of America. He also has those lights on his crowd lines there. Adds a little bit of extra fun. Oh, look at those flashing lights on the basket. Uh, yeah. He's Tim, got all kinds of lights. Tim's just uh, all lit up there, isn't he? Chester Unwind. Matt Grotti. Lots of hoops and hollers going yeah. on down there. They must have a pretty good crowd down there again this morning. There we go. More light. More lights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're getting into this light thing. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about in the dark. You need some light. You might as well light everything. Up. There's Tim Taylor. You guys look beautiful. Everybody ready for another Auburn? Three, two, one, Auburn. And that is Tim Taylor calling the uh, glows from yeah. the sky this morning. Scott the, Besley, our, our team leader, has a lot of miles to travel, and uh, so he's uh, standing up, was standing. I'm not sure if he still is there on the ground. Looks like he may have uh, deflated up but, there already. Uh, he has to leave town very early this morning, and so he's not flying. Uh, and so Tim Taylor is uh, stepping in as uh, our aerial team leader. Two, one, Auburn. And so once again, ladies and gentlemen, a thank you to our Dawn Patrol sponsor of uh, Dawn Patrol Show. That is the Route 66 Casino Hotel and RV Park. We'd like to thank so many of you for tuning in early on Balloon Fiesta Live. And of course, all of you who have turned up here at Balloon Fiesta Park early this morning and all week long for our Dawn Patrol shows. And uh, yeah, great job team, and we look forward to seeing and working with you all again next year. You know, Art, I just realized watching that video, this year, 2020, would have been the 25th uh, Dawn yep. Patrol show. Uh, yep. When we started that uh, that little video segment, I made comment about it being the 24th anniversary edition. So this was to have been our 25th, which now I guess gets put off until, like so many things, gets postponed until 2021. So happy 25th anniversary a little bit early, Dawn Patrol team. <laughs> and as we've seen all week, there's been a whole lot of folks in Albuquerque taking their first week's worth of Dawn Patrol flights. So yeah. uh, I, I think that there'll be some conversations about, or maybe even midweek, seeing even more balloons up for Dawn Patrol in the years to come, because there's certainly more people getting excited about it, getting those extra flights in that you need to do to be able to be really ready to do a Dawn Patrol or a Dawn Patrol show with us. And so uh, some great stuff, I think, coming down the pike, more folks getting involved in doing that. And I, that was probably one of the best days we've seen for a, a glow in the sky in the Dawn Patrol yeah. show. I think that and the day that we did midweek when they did the formation flight, probably two of the best Dawn Patrol shows I've seen in those 24 years, and I've been there for every one of them. Yep, you have. So uh, really nice stuff that we uh, have brought to you. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I want to do a quick shout out to everybody who has joined us online on Facebook and on yeah. YouTube. We're getting um, highs and all kinds of great uh, thoughts from those folks. We're trying to respond to those as it happens, but uh, sometimes we're just as caught up in the show as you are. Now, here is a live picture. Uh, this is at Balloon Fiesta Park. Now, again, in fact, I was over that direction yesterday, and the city had big signs up and the roads blocked off about no spectators. But there, the city is allowing some balloons to inflate and lift off from Balloon Fiesta Park. So you can see the sun's not even up yet uh, in the direction we're looking there. And so one of the balloons, and I can't, uh, I'm not sure exactly who that is, but we've got somebody standing up at Balloon Fiesta Park. So there will be balloons in the sky in Albuquerque today. And while we heard the winds last year at this time basically non-existent, 
there is kind of, there's something moving in and we're getting a lot of west winds and even checking that wind detector that we talked about. Winds are a little higher today, so we may see uh, less balloons in the sky here in Albuquerque live today. But to talk about how we got to this point, uh, we brought in the <laughs> Director of Operations for Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, Sam Parks. He joins us here in Studio 519. Sam, good morning. How are you this morning? All right, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much and appreciate you allowing me to come in. You betcha. So, obviously, we didn't have Balloon Fiesta as we know it this year. What kind of happened? What led up to this point? Wow, uh, that's a long story. Uh, well, let's go all the way back to March, uh, early this year when the pandemic hit. You know, we, we wound up sending our, our staff members home so they could work uh, in the safety and confinement of their own homes so we could learn more about this virus. But as soon as we went home, we started working on contingency plans as to how we might be able to put on this balloon fiesta for our 49th. Uh, and those plans, uh, they, they took several different turns. Uh, it, as we learned more about the virus and how we could possibly try to implement Balloon Fiesta in its grandeur there at Balloon Fiesta Park, it, it kind of it changed every time that we learned more about the virus. Uh, we actually developed several different contingency plans. A meant all in. A, a means that we were going to have all of our balloons, all of our spectators, but obviously we were going to implement some new sanitation measures and social distancing there at the park. B was balloon fiesta light. Balloon fiesta light means that we just have a, a typical balloon fiesta, but we scale it down. And C meant cyber, which meant that uh, unfortunately we would have no spectators, no guests there at the park, but we would have our balloons and we would use your production crew as you really do a gr great job in just producing a show that would be seen around the world. And of course, D stands for a little bit of dread, but also it means delay. And ultimately, that's what we had to decide because it, it was first and foremost in our minds and our hearts that the safety of our guests and our pilots and all those that are involved in Balloon Fiesta, we had to keep them safe. So that was the right decision to make. And Sam, how difficult was it? Because this decision had to be made. You couldn't wait until you know, two weeks ago and decide, okay, it doesn't look good for next week, so let's just, you know, call it off. You had to make this decision really months in advance with no real clear idea of what the COVID-19 situation would be by then, what might be in store. Did you come under any criticism for making the decision? Some people I know online saying, well, they made it too early. Why are they postponing now? Why don't we wait longer and see? What was the, the problem or what were the contingencies with the timeline that you had to deal with when you had to make that decision? You know, that's a great question, Glenn, because we considered delaying the, the decision so we could continue to learn more about the virus and perhaps uh, learn more about how social distancing and other kinds of virus mitigation factors were hopefully improving these things into where we could possibly put on Balloon Fiesta. You know, and we even, uh, the board members, who we have a wonderful uh, volunteer group of board members, 24 to be exact, and there were some emails going around this week about how they, they were so pleased that they made the decision as early as they did because had we delayed that, that was just going to create more hardships in the event that we did indeed have to cancel. Uh, and we saw this week the, the numbers of cases uh, for the virus here in the state of New Mexico has really spiked. And so to have our event uh, cancel at the last minute would have been catastrophic financially as well as logistically. And so, as I said, we started back in March. And so uh, around June, we, we had set up a deadline by which that we needed to make a decision because we understand that all the vendors and all the sponsors and all of our partners, and as you, as you well know, Glenn, there's thousands of those partners that, are, that help put on the largest balloon event in the world. So we knew that we had to make the decision in a timely fashion in which that those people could change their plans. And any guests that may have reservations for airline tickets, et cetera, to come to Albuquerque, we needed to give them ample opportunity to change those plans. And in the beginning, there were a few people uh, that said that we may have made the decision too early, but then those same people a week later said, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to think about the right and wrong decision to make, and we do think that you made the right decision. And now that we see that our cases here in New Mexico have indeed spiked, I, I feel confident that our board back in June really did make the right decision. 
So Albuquerque National Balloon Fiesta is a nonprofit corporation. What and obviously all the vendors that you just talked about, this has got to have had a pretty major economic impact on not only them but the balloon fiesta itself as well. Can you speak a little bit to what that kind of meant when we made that decision and what has it done to the economy that usually happens this time of year? Well, the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta is indeed the largest event in the state of New Mexico to the tune of approximately $180 million of economic impact to the state. So that's a very large number. And particularly for those vendors who use this 10 day period to, it's almost like a Black Friday, I would imagine, uh, where they have worked real hard throughout the entire year. But those nine to 10 days there at Balloon Fiesta Park really do uh, make them have a good year financially. Uh, and so we were, we were so disappointed and, and sad for those companies that partner up with us diligently every year and they were not going to uh, have that opportunity to make those resources. You know, and there's also service groups that I feel bad about. For example, our Civitan Club that partners up with us for parking, our Kiwanis Club, which provides scholarship money to the Key Club uh, high school students who help us with uh, uh, our gate tickets. So this impact goes wide and far, and so I'm, uh, I'm disappointed that we made this decision. However, I think it, it was the right decision because even though we miss everyone, again, we want everyone to be safe, uh, and we want them to come back next year. So Sam, on a slightly happier note, um, this week has been different for you know literally tens of thousands of us, certainly the uh, several hundred pilots and their crew who make the uh, annual trip out to Albuquerque, people like yourself, that's, that's your day job out there. For me, the first time in 31 years, I've been home uh, during the first two weeks of October. I've always been out uh, as a temporary resident of Albuquerque. Um, on a personal level, what has this week uh, with Balloon Fiesta Siesta been like for you? Now, we know you got a chance to go fly, which you normally would not do during uh, these nine days. But um, how are you and the board uh, seeing this week as it's passed by without a Balloon Fiesta? What's been some of the personal impact you've seen? As I mentioned earlier on, there was a lot of email communications going back and forth between staff members and board members, something to the effect of, well, you know, a year ago I was going to Costco and I was loading up all of our supplies for our <laughs> tailgating. And so there was a lot of kind of disappointment in the fact that that normal routine, as you mentioned, Glenn, that had go, gone on for 30, 40, almost 50 years, had, had kind of hit the pause button. Uh, but you know, one of the other things that has really been encouraging this week is all the Facebook posts, social media posts, the emails, the phone calls from people from around the world. And, and actually those guests that um, come to our event on an annual basis send us well wishes about how they miss being there with us this year. And, and having the broadcast that you guys are doing or actually getting the word out about our, all of our merchandise and our souvenir sales. And so other than getting a chance to fly on weekends, I've been packing boxes all week long for shipping all these uh, uh, merchandise items that y'all been selling. So, <laughs> so it, it's been a busy week uh, to say the least and it's been fun to hear from people. Uh, and it's also fun to see some of the local balloonists that have really put on a great show for the, for the folks here in Albuquerque with those pop-up glows and all the flights that have been taking place around Albuquerque. I flew yesterday morning and my wife in the basket counted over 80 balloons. Now, uh, and I know in some locations that might be a, a large size rally, but here in Albuquerque, it's almost normal. Uh, but it was really cool to see all the balloons all over the city yesterday uh, because it was Saturday and, and uh, as I said to the newspaper a week or so ago, that ballooning and balloon fiesta is part of the DNA of Albuquerque. And so to see that continue has really warmed my heart. Sam Parks, Director of Operations for the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta here in Studio 519 with us. Sam's going to be back with us uh, in just a little bit. You can hang out. we got to do some other uh, business here today. You talked about all that merchandise. So I want to give you a quick uh, shout and a look at what the little piece of the store that we brought into the studio. Of course, with the gift shop closed physically and the fact that you can't be here, there's no tents on the field, we have BalloonFiestaStuff.com, BalloonFiestaStuff.com, and uh, we've been offering specials every single day this week. This week's special is these metal 
stemmed wine glasses in multiple colors. They are the merchandise deal of the day today. We'll have uh, another one tomorrow, and then we'll be back on our regular every Monday special. But of course, for the next two days, we have a special coupon code that also works in addition to the things that are on sale. You can put in the code BFLIVE and you get 10% off everything in your cart except the Siesta merchandise, which is a limited edition, and the calendars, because we've already reduced the calendars to about the wholesale price as well. So take a, a shopping trip today. We always encourage people on the final Sunday. Now's your last chance to get out there and get to the vendors. Well, our store is going to stay there, so it's not your last chance, but it's getting to your last chance to use the coupon code. So go shopping, put Sam to work packing more boxes next week, and uh, do lots of shopping. There's all kinds of stuff available from shirts to pins to patches, to metal prints, to a blanket, to a puzzle, to magnets and keychains and tigers and bears and all those other things, oh my, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lions, tigers, and bears, and oh my. Uh, yeah, and uh, don't forget, of course, the Balloon Fiesta Live pin. Uh, yes. Because this may be the last year of this design. We're already talking about doing something new for next year. So uh, there it is on screen right next to that. Are there any of the uh, of the bronze uh, uh, limited edition pins left? Art, have you checked on that? Uh, you know, I, I, I did not look this morning at the number, but yes, I know there are some left. I don't know exactly okay. how many. There's only 200 of those made. They are numbered, and it is the final of this set. We did a gold, we did a silver, and now we have the bronze copper ones here. Each of those was only uh, 200 made of each of those. The copper, the silver, and the gold sold out quickly. The uh, bronze one, we didn't do as much uh, hoopla about it, so there are still a few of those left. That qualifies as a Siesta edition, so it doesn't get the 10% uh, off in the coupon code. But nearly everything else in the store, not to mention the fact that there's a whole lot of stuff on sale. So not only is it on sale yeah. for a good price, then you get the coupon code off right. the top of that as well. So, Yeah, and I know that the crew have been busy because I got my notice that my package, which I have placed an order for earlier this week, uh, is going to be on its way via FedEx. So thank you to uh, Sam and uh, all of the other folks that have been working behind the scenes to pack those boxes. Hey, you know, it is the final day, the last Sunday of the uh, Balloon Fiesta, and this year our Siesta. And that always means our final mass ascension. So I think, Art, we have some video to show folks that. We do, so let's just get right into it. So in just uh, less than a minute, uh, you may have heard that, 30 seconds yeah. away. From the liftoff of our balloon of the day, Twist of Fate flown by Steve Coffin for Isleta Resort and Casino and the singing of our national anthem on our main stage. Please direct your attention to our national anthem in colors, sung by Mark Rose. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
The soulful sounds of the saxophone of Mark D. Rose playing our national anthem and Steve Coffing taking our flags aloft. And so we are officially underway on day, day nine. nine. There goes Keith to catch. Yeah, carrying that uh, Nature Valley uh, banner for our sponsor. One of the first, uh, it is the first of our Krispy Kreme glow balloons. Oh, yeah, right. First one of them to get airborne this morning. That's, uh, I guess, an advantage to sign up to do the Krispy Kreme glow. Well, you get to be uh, standing up. Yeah. And so you're, uh, after the Dawn Patrol, you're the next ones out. So if you like flying early and wanting to be ahead of the crowd, um, yeah, being in the Krispy Kreme glow would be I a good thing. I spotted it. I spotted <laughs> it. A zebra with a red hat is affectionately known as a zit or a zebra in training. <laughs> zebra for those of you overseas. And there's um, the happy face we've talked about this week on the parachute top. So the uh, gal in the zebra stripes without the red hat is our trainer. So an experienced zebra. And that uh, smiley face, Bill Walker's honeydew balloon. Yeah. There you can hear the inflator so fan running there, on there's low. There's Tristan. That's <laughs> Tristan, yeah, getting yeah. our uh, one of our two XTO balloons inflated. This one is as uh, time flies. And as you can see, we have our camera right there because that is the balloon that flies our balloon cam right. all so week Right, so we'll be getting us. some uh, aerial views as soon as they get airborne this morning. You're looking right up the throat there, basically in the basket, looking past the burners. That's it right there with the red top. And then you get a black stripe, gray stripe, and a lot of white. That is as time flies, flying our XTO banner and our balloon cam for us this week. Now, there's a yellow balloon with a Zia in the top, but that is not the McConnell's Zia balloon, I don't believe. It's not. It's that not because the McConnell's balloon it's actually right has here in a, front red of the top. a red top. Yeah, there it is. Uh, there it is. You know right what? That there. should be the Fiesta balloon. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't realize it had a Zia on the top. Uh, that's the first time I've seen it this week, and we've seen that balloon take off several times, but I don't know we've seen it in place. So on the left, the yellow one with the red top what is the Zia the balloon. We're talking Zia about. balloon. And there is the top that we're talking about. The one about we're now talking about. The Fiesta balloon. And then the other yellow one in the mix, perfect. The other, the yellow one on the right is John Bolger's and balloon. And that's our other XTO balloon. He's the other one with yeah. the XTO. So we got yellow galore here in front. Great shot looking up inside as time flies. Yeah. Our red XTO balloon, as I've been referring to it, as opposed to the yellow one. We saw Tristan McLean. You may have noticed he didn't have his arm was kind of all inside the jacket there. <laughs> That's because on his very first flight, now there's the Fiesta there's balloon, the Fiesta and you balloon see the Z at that the top. That has a Z at the top. Yeah, yeah. I never realized. You know, I didn't either, there, and, and I've, I've seen, seen that balloon for years. Oh, yeah. yeah never realized it. There's, there he is. There's Tristan. Hi, Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> Waving with his good arm. With his good arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're about, him, to, about to go uh, hot lost, here in our XTO yeah, balloon. We lost one of our great pioneers of the sport of learning was Tracy Barnes. Although we all still benefit from the innovations that well, he brought to the sport. One of the things we've been talking about all week long, the parachute top. Right. That was uh, one of Tracy's inventions, and uh, he's always been remembered as being so magnanimous. He could have and patented a great and copied it. Right yeah, there. Oh, look at the balloon going right by through the yeah. top. He could have patented it and copyrighted it and made it um, his. his and for his balloons alone, but he shared it with the balloon world, and, um, and it is the basically the standard deflation port in balloons uh, built all around the world to this very day. And there's our, as time flies, XTO balloon, the red one with the white, black, and gray standing up. And as it comes up, there's the XTO banner. Here's the shot what the uh, folks at the balloon basket are seeing yep. as that balloon stands up. Penny Suttle is going to be flying for uh, Tristan today. And look, you can even see the XTO banner through the balloon. Yeah, yeah. Look at the excitement, our passenger. Yeah. Getting ready to go up in our uh, red XTO as time flies balloon. John has taken Dakota Sunrise, the yellow, the uh, yellow XTO balloon. Now is that one of the? Isn't that one of the XTO folks there? That is. That's the one in the red balloon. You can actually see the balloon fiesta banner on the yeah, left yeah. side of the basket there. Yeah, but I, I just, oh, I oh in the, actually in the basket. I was referring well, yeah. to the, the lady in the basket, the one that's yeah. so excited. I it think might be, she's one of the might XTO. Be it might be Diana. Yeah. And so, uh, and I see the balloon camera on the uh, right side behind her there. Yep. 
The dump going to fly there right over. There they go. Wave from goodbye. The basket. This you is are what now it looks like. airborne. Yep, this is what it looks like when you take off and launch at Balloon Fiesta Park. And there's Tristan with his good arm waving. And <laughs> <laughs> other one poor is, Tristan. Uh, and the poor guy. What a yeah. way to spend your uh, first amazing fiesta. And there they are waving. Yeah. Oh, what a fabulous shot. Yes. We see you up there. <laughs> and looking back on the field. Yep. Too many camera angles to show at once here. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> They've got us as well. Have a great flight. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I love those shots. Yeah. That's part of the fun of being here at Balloon Fiesta. There Fiesta's. you go. It is. It is. Look at that crowd. Man, oh, man. What a great Sunday morning. It is. And another shot back. So as you take off from the field, you look back down and... And you can see how we launch from two parts of the field now. You're looking at the south end there where you see the Touchstone Energy Balloon, that white one. You see the Fiesta Balloon. And then you look, uh, there's some open and space. And you can see Sherry taking off in the yeah, white one. Yeah, Sherry's just getting energy. airborne as we're talking about her. And then you see that little bit of open space where there are balloons cold inflating. And then back beyond that was where the Rainbow Riders were at as uh, they were all inflated. So we're launching uh, from both south and north end, which is and a that convenience And that is Tom McConnell going right over right, the top of our Ziga camera. Balloon, right as the... Uh, it's a convenience we have because this field is, is literally so large. How many acres do we have here? 80? 80, 80 acres, 80 is, acres the, is just the launch field because the park itself actually includes the buildings where we are, right. the baseball field south of us and farther yeah. on. It's 300 and uh, I'm going to, you see, 360 some acres. Okay. But the launch field itself is, is 80. 80 acres is of 80. launch space. Yeah. We've never shown pilots briefing before we did that three times this yeah. year thanks to and the access thank you for letting yeah. us have for that access do that yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think that will be a, a normal for us a right. lot of the pilots who are in our audience who aren't here have really commented how much they enjoyed seeing the pilot briefing that's fantastic uh, that angle from balloon fiesta and i know a lot of the uh, uh, non-balloonists have enjoyed it as well that's gives them good. a little bit of a behind the scenes look because that's something even when you come out as a spectator you really don't see that take place right so well, it helps explain what's view. going on with Brad's explanation of what the weather, yesterday's tall box, yeah. the fact that it was going <laughs> to be a box, but slow yet today. And we've been able to talk um, and show the data that he's sharing yeah. about winds in different directions and altitudes and things. Yeah. So it's really, um, really given another insight to what yeah. goes into ballooning. Yeah, and we're fortunate that all of those people take time off of their work and away from their home and family, and they come here, and they're able to spend it with us to produce this kind of as do performance you performance that we do and thank you as so do you absolutely so we'd like to give a shout out to everybody that's not here you know wait another day we'll be home either later today or tomorrow <laughs> we miss you we love you and uh, we had a great time and we'll see you again next year we'll do it again next year thank you Glenn. thank you sir excellent job thank you appreciate it all your help. all your team great job even if we take the number down to 500 balloons and we know right. there's like 570 of easy math 500 balloons nine days of flying, that's 4,500 flights. And remember that we do this within about an hour or two in the morning. Yeah. This truly is the busiest airport anywhere in the world for this time period. There's and the so graphic. There's the graphic right yep. there. Thank you, guys. <laughs> this is just great. So think about this, and we're doing this with a team of zebras down there, led ultimately by Henry, by Henry. who we just talked about, yeah. and his team and the safety officers as well. So, uh, yeah, and this is a, a conservative estimate if you think about it. There's a shot from our balloon cap. There's a, is that a baseball field it's down below. It's a baseball like field. Yeah. That's uh, probably less than a mile yeah, south of the field. a little south of us. Yep. That's uh, General Mills. Uh, oh, yeah. big building yeah, right sure in front is. of them. See yeah, the blue tower? I see the blue tower. As soon as I saw that, I recognized it. Field. It, it, it the spider. There's our oh, preventive yeah. pest control balloon with the big old black, black spider widow. on the side. Yeah, black yeah, widow on the side of black the balloon. Widow. Don Boyer flies preventive. And you know, we've gotten it right, preventive. Last year we had one of those blooper tongue there covers and it was preventive. <laughs> <laughs> but preventive pest control. Yeah, great shot of the spider on the side of the balloon. Yeah. And, uh, there's our penguins. There's tall Steve. Uh, hey, Roma. There's tall Steve in uh, with Andrew Holly as the pilot just beside him. That is Puddles to the left. That's the male penguin. 
um, and then Splash, you just can't quite, you can just see the black top of Splash uh, off to the right there. Um, that's the female. Oh, look at that Splash shot of got the together, carousel. of course, and procreated um, Paul Steve. And yeah, look at that amazing artwork on the carousel. I love those mirrored panels up in the top of the balloon. Yep. They appear to be, that's actually just silver fabric, but it gives the uh, illusion of mirrored panels in the top of the balloon. Look at that view from up in the air. What a morning to be flying. What it is. Yeah. And the sun hasn't even made it up, although no, you can just see it in the yeah. out, out, out west there. The, the but shadow it's, it's is still starting not, to come. Uh, not up above the sandias, and the, the balloons here on the field are not yet. You know, once that sun comes up and it hits the colors of the balloon, they just begin to pop, and uh, we don't see that yet. Speaking of seeing, you can see Impossible with Canon, and this is the 48th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon. You're watching Balloon Fiesta Live. We are powered by XTO, a subsidiary of Exxon Mobil. There's a view. Those, that's our officials tower. That's just a, maybe, I don't know, what, 20, 30 feet away from us, from our rooftop studio. They're just across literally the drive from us. All the red jackets you see there are the officials. That's uh, Henry Rosenbaum, our balloon meister, uh, right there in the back. You see him there in the cap. And um, several members of his team that are there, they uh, not only have to make all the decisions about when we fly and what we fly, but they also then monitor um, all the goings on on the field. They're watching to make sure that pilots are at minimum altitudes, watching to make sure there's uh, no airway congestion along with all of our uh, launch directors, our zebras. So they're monitoring everything throughout the flight. A uh, whole team of folks there on the officials tower. You know, Art, that was a great morning on our final Sunday last year and, and a great way for us to remember uh, this is the final Sunday this year. Um, I noted in that video that we made comment to the passing of Tracy Barnes, one of the uh, uh, pioneers of the sport of looting, and we would be yes. remiss this year without also noting uh, the recent loss of another a great ballooning pioneer, that being Don Picard. Uh, in many ways, what we enjoy at Balloon Fiesta, we can thank Don for, because while it was Ed Yost and his team that invented the modern hot air balloon, um, once the Office of Naval Research said they really weren't interested in the product, um, they were left with, well, here's a product, what do we do with it? And exactly. it was largely Don Picard who went out and showed the world that, hey, this new type of aircraft can be a great personal sport aircraft and in fact he organized um, what I believe was the first hot air balloon festival it was it was actually a race as a part of the winter carnival up in St. Paul Minnesota uh, but Don organized and put that together uh, back in the early 70s um, and so uh, to um, his family and friends our deepest deepest sympathies the sport has lost a true pioneer uh, really, I th in my book, the last of the big three being Ed Yost, Tracy Barnes, and Don Picard here in the United States, not uh, discounting Don Cameron uh, over in the UK, of course, who's still with us, but um, terribly sad to, to lose Don. He was a great personal friend of mine, and I know we're all going to miss him, and thank him for what he, uh, he gave to us, and that is, uh, in large sense, the sport of hot air ballooning. You're right. We, uh, we have had a number of those pioneers and those visionaries who have taken the sport and even Balloon Fiesta with Sid Cutter forward. Yes, those guys yes. that way back in the beginning recognized what the balloon was. Of course, it was the you called it the new uh, aircraft, It's kind of the new old one because it was the very <laughs> first form of flight. And then True. after it kind of it kind of went away and there wasn't much of it until, like you said, the 60s with with Ed Yost and then Don Picard and, of course, Tracy and Don Cameron. And then Sid Cutter in 72 brings it to Albuquerque yeah, and yeah. brings some of those people in. Don was here. Ed Yost made trips here. Um, all those folks made trips here and um, have been part of Balloon Fiesta over the years. And it's just been uh, it's been a great ride here in Albuquerque. It really has put Albuquerque on the map. When uh, I go out and train in different parts of the country as I have for a number of years, not doing it now, but have over the years, I'm from Albuquerque, and they say, oh, the balloon place. So everybody knows uh, all of that, and it's thanks to guys like we just talked about, Tracy yeah. and Ed and Don and Sid and others. And that was always the first question I would get whenever someone would learn that I was a balloonist. Oh, have you ever been out to, where is it that they have that, that great big, out Albuquerque, where they have the, the, the big balloon fiesta? You know, that's, yep. Yep. that everyone know, any, if you don't have to know anything about ballooning, but you know Albuquerque, and you know it because of ballooning. So that's always kind of fun. 
And uh, it's not the greatest day to fly here today. It's a little breezy, and so we don't have uh, as many balloons up as we've had on previous days. We saw one balloon at Balloon Fiesta Park. There may have been a couple of others. We're sending our camera to the west side where there may be some additional balloon flights going on. The local balloon club, Quad A, is attempting to have a little fun competition today. But the last I looked at the winds out there, they were going to be a little brisk for that to happen. So I'm not mm. we're, we're sending our uh, reporter that way to find out what's actually happening there. But again, last year on this final Sunday, it was a fabulous day and we had some great in-camera footage. I'd like to share it with you now. Our XPO, Our XPO balloons are flying balloons, together. Yeah. yeah, flying side by side there or close enough. Close enough camera we get the shot and get them. Yeah, the guinea pig is uh, coming. He's going to cross just over us, and I bet we're going to get buzzed by uh, Tall Steve today, too. He and uh, Simba Lou both getting airborne now. There's your great shot of the guinea pig. Yeah, a great story behind G this. G-Pig. G-Pig, yep. A great story behind it is that uh, Andrew and some of his buddies were uh, sitting around in the pub one night and talking about how, you know, sometimes we, we pick one guy to be the guy that goes up and checks the winds and see if it's going to be okay to fly or not. He's kind of the, he's kind of the, over here we usually call, we him, wind call him a wind dummy. Well, over there they call him, a, you know, a guinea pig. And sometimes we use that term here in the States, not yeah. so much in ballooning, but, um, he's yeah. walking, he's looking. Yeah, there's tall Steve. And so, um, they decided, well, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a, a real guinea pig balloon? And so now, um, we do. And, um, uh, just the, uh, no, that's Arroyo. the Arroyo to that's the West. Arroyo there. Yeah, because there's the there's uh, trailers with General Mills. Right. So they're less than a mile south of us. Yeah. And they took off a few minutes, quite a few minutes yeah, ago. They're moving pretty slow. Yeah. There goes. Um, and there's a few more balloons overhead taking advantage of the box and starting to come. Oh, up. look at the great time they're having. Hi, Deanna. Yeah. Fiesta. Good morning. Hey, and that little <laughs> blue box. Oh, yeah. That little that's blue cool. box that's between them. Yeah, that's a digital. Yeah. That uh, was Eric won yesterday. Derek won so one of those yesterday. For yeah. Yeah. So they're having a great time up there. Yeah. Dos Equis is airborne. I don't you can see the sun is now high enough that it's beginning to reach, just barely, beginning to reach some of the area, or some of the airborne balloons. Not yet. There's a great the shot of here. Doug in the basket. As yep. we pull back, you see the feet. And there's the logo, WWW When Pigs Fly. And I'm guessing that next year here at Balloon Fiesta, we'll see those uh, Hamlet for President pins again. We might. Good morning, Doug. Hey, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have them come right over us. It really slowly is. Because yeah. <laughs> most of the time this week, a couple of times they were zooming them. by. There's a great shot of the Coronado Center balloon, birthplace of Balloon Fiesta. There's a look at that. There's downtown. Whoa. Toby Brown flies the Coronado Center balloon for us, otherwise known as Crystal Blue. Okay. This is the carousel taking off. You see just the red at the bottom. Now we're starting to see the white clouds. Now you can see the animals. animals. There's the lion, the and unicorn, the, the uh, zebra. And that building in the background is our Sid Cutter Pilot Pavilion. That's where the hospitality is for all of our pilots throughout the week. Right. Great shot of the front side of Hamlet now. Yep. And we continue to work our way through our farewell mass ascension this morning. What a flight it is this morning, too. Now the sun has come up and lighting the balloons up in the sky and also beginning also to the strike the field. And it always becomes an even more colorful spectacle once we get the sun up. Coming right at us, the pink one with the white banner and the pink hearts. That's Hearts of Fire, yes. Brad Rice. And I won't tell the story. Absolutely. There's the uh, rebuild of the original Fiesta balloon. balloon. Fiesta balloon. Yep. We talked about that yesterday. We did. It is now airborne. A little bit of an odd shape, too. It's not exactly a racer. It's not exactly a traditional teardrop balloon. That was the, uh, the model for what was going to become a new brand of balloon. Also high overhead, if our uh, stage camera can get a shot of the balloon that has the green blue and red verticals there just on the right side of the field here. There it is. That is what we call a cloud hopper, ladies and gentlemen. He's waving on cue almost as if he can hear us. Notice there is no basket. The pilot uh, simply sits in a little swing seat with the uh, propane tank and burner uh, assembly strapped to his back. And it's a little small one-man balloon and those are lovingly called cloud hoppers. 
Wags, as we said earlier, the new balloon of Dean Carlton. And from that shot, you can kind of see the 3D of his yeah, nose. Yeah, you can see the nose is 3D. And the artwork is really incredible. Uh, I've told the story before how the family, uh, that artwork is modeled after the family's two dogs. And they took literally hundreds of pictures, they said, sent them to the balloon builder and uh, kept having minor revisions done to the artwork until they were everyone was happy. And it, uh, if you're up close to that balloon, it looks just like that puppy is just going to jump right out of the balloon at you. And lick you. I'm just just heard a, a huge cheer from the field, and if you look to the right of the picture, oh, there goes center this. stage. Yeah, I think that's the first time they've been airborne this week. Might be. Beth Wright Smith lies the center stage. That the Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo coach. Yep. Wells Fargo, Fargo a longtime sponsor here at Balloon Fiesta. Absolutely. And we've talked about this before when we our special shape days. At the bottom, you see what is what would be the normal part of a balloon. And if you just imagine the, a regular shaped balloon going up in the coach, you can see how much dead air or colder air or non-lifting air right. is there. And inside, the when you look up inside, you'll see that shape and you'll see all the baffling and lines to hold if the balloon into a square yeah, shape. Our balloon cam still doing work out in, yeah. the, in the field. There comes the there balloon coming in for landing right there. You see one of the crew for a nice touchdown nice stand-up landing just across the fence. Nicely done. So our crew is doing that. and um, Another one coming right in. Meanwhile, we're getting... Give, gives yeah. you an idea how congested it can be. Yeah. But also how, how, how wonderful the flying conditions are this morning because yeah. two really nice, just easy... Look at that. Right, on, um, right next to each stand other. Stand-up landings right oh. beside each other. Oh, Rainbow's Rider balloon, and I saw this banner for Safe Light Auto Glass. The box is getting a little bit stronger. A little. So if you uh, hang out there, it's a little bit easier oh, to wow, get Wow, look over north. to our right, though. Yeah. There's where all the action there is. There it is. Look to the east and yeah. behind us. Yeah. Yeah, they're all... Uh, so the sky is still full of balloons. The field is emptying out rather rapidly. We're now beginning to get a, a good view of the size of the crowd here this morning as we can see all the way down to the north end through the balloons now uh, on the field. That for you. There's uh, Off Your Rocker. Off Your Rocker from uh, Gourmet Iraqi Road. There's a whole lot of them coming back over the top now. The box yeah. is definitely set up. It's a little slow up there on top. Boy, it won't be but just a few more minutes, Art, and I think we're going to have the field cleared of everybody that wants to fly. I don't see any more inflations ongoing. One maybe at the far, far north end. And I can't tell if they right are... right in front and one far out, yeah. If yep. they're inflating or if they have, are, have landed and are deflating, but um, it uh, has gone by. It, to be such a slow morning, it, the inflation and the full launching has just gone by sudden, really quickly. Boom. Just all of a sudden... Yeah. You know, we were looking at a field, just packs of balloons, and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, they're all gone, and there's just a few left to go. But they're going to have a fabulous flight. Oh, yeah. They yeah. are having fabulous flights. There are a few directly overhead of us. Well, there's this layer to the south, and then I'm trying to tell if it stops and then goes east and then goes north. It's kind of one of those light and variable days yeah, it really as you is. look up. I mean, because these, want these couple of balloons that are sort of mid-level look like they're kind of going to the northeast, more at a diagonal, and then higher above, you get the flow back to the south. Uh, there yeah. goes one of the Wells Fargo balloons now. They have two of those round ones, so they've got all three of their balloons right. in the air today. Another one of those corporations that has seen the value of marketing through hot air ballooning. Through hot air ballooning, yeah. Because they take those around, as we talked with Barry Ballinger and the Great Plains Bank, he usually hangs out in Texas because that's where his bank is right, based. Right, that's where the bank is based. Yeah, so the Wells um, Fargo guys go to the cities and towns and states where there are Wells Fargo banks. Yep. As Wells Fargo likes to say, they like bringing smiles to their customers. And we know for, for a fact that XTO has certainly seen the value of marketing through hot air ballooning this week as they've been uh, our sponsor here for Balloon Fiesta Live. and That is them packing up the red Yeah, they are packing up as time flies. And you see, I tried to do some marketing there too. I put a Balloon Fiesta Live banner on the side of the basket. Right. So we just had a great shot of that. There's Penny. Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. Thanks for the great shots. Yeah. Yeah. 
the, the uh, straps go around the balloon to help I was about to pull say the air out. That, yeah, they use those up. Velcro straps because you streamer the balloon, you, you uh, squeeze, as we call it, all the air out, and then you use those Velcro straps to wrap the envelope every few feet to keep uh, air from getting back in it. And that way it helps to pack the balloon and make it much more compact when you pack the uh, empty envelope back into its storage bag. It's amazing how much space air takes up. It is amazing, yeah. There's one of those shots of all the balloons up. Yeah. They're kind of just looking back over the just top of us because I see Smokey Bear. Right. And if I turn around and look, there's Smokey Bear up there. So uh, this is basically looking over our head. Over, yeah. Looking past us. Hi oh, there, that's, kids. That's cute. You're on Balloon Fiesta Live. They can't uh, hear me, probably. Can't hear us, probably, yeah. yeah. There's Smurf and Bonnie Blue. And Bonnie Blue. Nice little combination of those two balloons together they there. Look nice. they the look blues nice. and whites. The same thing. Um, he is, his balloons prior. <laughs> beautiful day, beautiful landing, perfect balloon fiesta. Outstanding. That's <laughs> so one of our features. one of our XTO folk. And uh, it's our pleasure, believe me, to bring this to you. And uh, great fun doing so. We have we do have a good time. We hope that comes through in the broadcast. That. Uh, above all, we're having fun because that's what Fiesta is all about. It is. Even, even our uh, competition from the early days has always been about having fun. Yeah. I think it was Bob Ruppenthal, a former board of director member and yes. a p president of the organization, who said the person who wins at the Fiesta is the one who has the most fun. I think so. And just looking overhead and everybody is just hanging there. Yeah. It's and there's just one balloon still standing on the field. Everyone else has inflated and launched, and so uh, the crowd now milling around, making their way to Main Street, doing a little shopping. Last opportunity for that with all of our fine vendors here. Um, if yeah. there are closeout deals, they're happening right now. Yeah. If yeah. there are. A lot of times there aren't because they that's sell right. out of so much they stuff. They sell, and that's exactly right. That if you wait, you know, if your strategy is to wait and buy things uh, in a fire sale, as it were, at the end of the week, sometimes you're... Uh, just out of luck because so many things sell out early on. Do you think Admiral uh, Nelson's going to bring his purple balloon down here well on the field? Well, he might. Yeah, it looks like he's beginning to descend a little bit. Might try to come back and land. You know, uh, talk about landing on the field, though. I have a sneaking suspicion a lot of folks are going to want to stay in the air just as long as they, they can, can today. It's that kind of a day it where is. you can fly a nice, long, easy flight, and it's the last day of Fiesta. It's kind of a bittersweet time to, to say goodbye. A lot of us will be saying goodbye to friends that we only get to see once a year when we're out here. And um, I mean, you and I don't get to see each other that often. We occasionally get to uh, get together at another balloon event somewhere. But a lot of times, for a lot of friends, this is the one time a year they see each other out here. So it's kind of bittersweet. And you kind of just want to stay in the air and, and hope that it doesn't really have to end. That's it. So they are telling pilots that they can land on the oh north good. end of the field. On the, the field, north end, okay. Which yeah, is that uh, end is pretty difficult. much open. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened to Admiral Nelson? He's still up there. Oh, um, he's back up. He's gone yeah, up higher. He, he came down just a bit. Now he's kind of back up where he started. So he may um, have just gotten that word. That and he, he may be trying to move a little further to the north end yeah, of the field before he descends. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. that would be the case. Well, what a way to end. What a glorious day. I mean, this is, and this is what Fiesta is all about. It's this kind of weather. It's cool, but not uh, bitterly cold. Uh, the sky is just brilliantly clear. There's not a cloud, no clumpy clouds today. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just, just an absolutely awesome, awesome day. And it's what the Chamber of Commerce likes to promote when they talk about Balloon Fiesta. So much to reflect on from that video. Yeah, yeah, so much. And and you can almost, I was shocked really listening because I, you can hear the melancholy in our own voices yes. as we know it's the final day and we're seeing the balloons for the last time and preparing to go on to uh, other adventures after Fiesta. Um, if this were a normal year, I'd be uh, moving on uh, back to my home state of uh, Texas for another event in San Antonio. Um, and last year I was headed off to two events in Texas, but yeah, it's, um, you can really hear it in our voices. And since it's the last Sunday, Ranger decided he wanted to make one final appearance too. Well, that's um, good. But I think but now he's, he's tired of being on camera and he's going to go. <laughs> well, he showed up in time. He, once he got on, he's there. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit of an audience in the studio today as we get ready to, um, kind of break things down after the show and, Everybody's taking all kinds of pictures, so we'll be uh, texting you some pictures 
of uh, the set with you and a uh, ranger there as well. So we did cool. find a, uh, a balloon um, standing up, uh, looks like uh, probably on the west side of Albuquerque. Yeah, that's where we were headed that direction. Um, and so uh, there is some up there. I've been watching the winds at Double Eagle, which is the airport on the west side of town near where the uh, club competition would have been going on today. And earlier it was kind of up kind of high and then it went to calm. And so I think people are just, uh, they're ready for the week to be over. Just as we heard in the video there, it's, one, it's a nice way to kind of uh, wrap things up. But we were talking about fire sales on the field last year. You know, the, the yeah. vending booths and all that stuff is. Right. We don't have a fire sale this year. We've just got great specials at BalloonFiestaStuff.com. And I want to take you through some of these. In fact, you know, we've talked about the pins and the fact that pins were in production and design is already being talked about. So we have a nice collection of 49 pins, the event pin, the America's Challenge pin, the Glow, the Chase Crew, the Dawn Patrol, all of those 2020 pins with the time flies on it. And they were all in production before we made the unfortunate but correct decision to postpone the event. So we have lots of those because we were expecting lots of you to be here. And of course that didn't happen. So now you get to go to balloonfiestastuff.com and you can pick those up online at balloonfiestastuff.com. And through tomorrow, Monday, so if you're watching this uh, on a recorded base basis, and I know a lot of you are, uh, you have until the end of Monday to be able to use the, our coupon code, which is BF Live. BF Live gets you 10% off everything in your cart except the Siesta merchandise and the calendars. The calendars are already basically priced at wholesale price for you. So you're going to want to pick those up. And the Siesta merchandise was very limited in the scope and sequence and the numbers that we had of them. So we are unable to offer the code for those. But there are lots of great things. There's that great patch there. That's a 9-inch Fiesta patch, Fiesta balloon patch with the uh, cartoon characters. There's Marvin the Martian and Wiley's on there and the Roadrunner's there and Bugs, I think, is there. So this is a really great patch. And I have to tell you, and we've mentioned it earlier in the year, uh, it took us more than two years to get the rights to be able to use those characters on any of our merchandise. And so we're really happy that we've been able to do that and bring it to you. And of course, Tom, if you'll just tip up just a touch, there's the Balloon Fiesta Live pin like we've been talking about. It's on sale as well this week, and it is included in your coupon code. So you'll get even more money off on the sale. And again, as we've talked about earlier, while that is our logo and has been our pin for the last three years, we're already having conversations about how to enhance that for Balloon Fiesta Live the fifth year as we move forward. So some uh, great things that are available. And the special for the day, Tom's not going to get to it, in fact, uh, as fast, is the wine glasses appropriate for the final day, final toasts, and those kinds of things as well. Absolutely, yeah. And that patch is one of the things that I picked up in my order earlier this week. Uh, earlier in the week, we were talking about uh, those characters in the Chuck Jones studio, and I was reminiscing about the chase flags that we had a few years that featured those uh, some of those characters. And so um, I don't have a jacket this year that I'm going to put that patch on, but I'm thinking maybe I'll do something uh, and perhaps frame those two chase flags in that patch uh, to put here in the office uh, as a remembrance of uh, Balloon Fiesta or the Fiesta Siesta, as it were, this year. There you go. And of course, the poster, which was going to be the third in a series of four, now is the third in a series Fourth. of five. Well, yeah, third and five, right. Yeah, and uh, you can kind of see it down there in the center of the uh, screen. Tom's going to zoom in on it for us. Wiley and uh, the Roadrunner, both in their own balloons. Wiley has done a splash and dash, except that he didn't do it very well. And the water is just pouring out of his basket. And the Roadrunner is bringing him a towel. Yes, yeah, he's running from and when you say the poster, that is the metal print. That's not the poster isn't mini size this year. We have the full size printed posters, of course, but yes. that is the metal print that we're showing on screen there, just so people aren't confused. And both the posters and the metal prints are available in signed and unsigned by the artist uh, versions as well. So um, I think we have lots of all of those left. So go ahead and get those as well. And again, the BF Live code gets you that 10% off those items as well. So a great deal for that. 
Sam Parks, who's the Director of Operations for the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, is still here with us. Good morning again, Sam. Good morning, Art. So let's change gears here. Last time we talked about all the stuff that led up to where it is. So let's reflect a little bit on this week and, and moving forward. What are your thoughts? As I mentioned earlier, I'm really impressed by the way that the, uh, the local balloonists and even some out-of-town balloonists uh, came in to, uh, in the first weekend, they provided that lifting spirits that had been worked on for quite some time to just recognize those frontline heroes. But in addition to that, they stayed around and, and they put on a show to the local uh, Albuquerque folks uh, over the course of the last nine days. And so it's been encouraging uh, to see that. It's also been really cool around the office, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that we've been package, packaging a lot of the merchandise that has been sold. Uh, I even packaged some that was going to Canada. Uh, so some of our uh, international folks north of the border have purchased some of our items. And so it's been really neat to see all this come together. Uh, it, it, even though it's a siesta uh, for the event, there's been a lot of people that didn't take a siesta. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Art, and also Glenn, uh, for really putting this thing together. Also, uh, Gary Williams in Studio 519. Uh, it's been really neat to be able to see uh, how this show has been put together. So I want to say thank you, Art. You did a wonderful job putting this together. And, and even though we're having a siesta, you didn't take a siesta. You've been working <laughs> around the clock to put this together. So I would like to say thank you for all the efforts because this has been really neat to be able to actually sit back and watch some of the coverage that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to see. Well, thank you for uh, recognizing that and tuning in. Uh, Matt Guthrie told us the other night. In fact, everybody we've talked to who normally is flying a balloon has said, wow, this has been really great to see what has happened and I see myself and I hear myself and I see my balloon. In fact, somebody just put on Facebook, they've been watching their, watching for their balloon every single day and we finally got it on the air for them. So uh, you're welcome, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sam, you touched on something interesting there and, and you're absolutely right. Art is the, I mean, I've been the, the, the announcer at Balloon Fiesta. This is my 31st year now, but Art is the executive producer behind Balloon Fiesta Live and he's the guy who makes this thing work. And, um, but I, what I want to go with this is you struck within me the chord that Balloon Fiesta really is a family. And when a family is hurting in one way or another, you tend to draw closer together and you take care of each other. And I think we've seen that this year with Balloon Fiesta Live and with what's been going on out in Albuquerque. Um, because a lot of folks, as you said, did not take a uh, did not take a siesta and continued to work when art called me a, a few months ago and said hey we're thinking about going ahead with balloon fiesta live would you be in and i immediately said absolutely i'm in all the way let's do this um talk a little bit about that attitude about how e even though there isn't a balloon fiesta uh, so many people so many uh parts of the family as you say are coming together from all around the country and we have our spectators tuning in from all around the world um, to try and keep that spirit of balloon fiesta alive even though we are in a sense taking a siesta yeah that's a good point glenn uh, ballooning is such a it's such a family oriented sport uh, and it's certainly something that is just obviously it's so big because they're seven stories tall uh, but it's so friendly and it's so welcoming and it's so comforting uh, and that's why that lifting spirits really resonated with a lot of folks because uh, we tried to lift the spirits of those that might be hurting during this pandemic and, and just needing uh, some beautiful, uh, just to take a moment to, to just uh, enjoy the beauty of Aerostation. And so, uh, Glenn, you are right. Uh, when things are not going so well, uh, we humans tend to, to come together and do what we can to try to lift up each other uh, and just put on whatever kind of show that we can to put a smile on people's face because that's what ballooning is all about. And so I'm encouraged uh, to know that 355 days from now, we'll be coming back again to hopefully celebrate our 49th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And it's going to be kind of like a, a homecoming because this uh, siesta that's lasted for a year, we will celebrate uh, our 49th. You, you said it earlier, Glenn, about how everyone is going to be anticipating that 49th as we get back together again. And that, I, I think it's going to be so welcoming and so, uh, so much of a homecoming for all of us ballooning uh, enthusiasts to be able to get together again. So I'm looking forward to that day. So thank you all who watched. 
Thank you all who participated in Lifting Spirits and putting on the show here, not only in Albuquerque, but around the world. Uh, because at this time, we need some smiles. And I'm hoping that this uh, accomplished that. So thank you all. So turning towards uh, 2021, moving the 49th out of year, what, uh, and, and I know this is tough. I mean, we didn't know COVID was coming six months ago and now all of it's here and it's basically changed the world. Looking a year out, what do you project for the 49th in 2021? Changes? Actually, one of our pilots wants to know if you're going to bump up the prize money since we didn't give out any this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that we'll be bumping up prize money, uh, but the 625 pilots that were registered to fly in this year's event, 2020, they've all been rolled over to 2021. And, and that's why we call this a postponement instead of a cancellation. We're so gracious. Uh, uh, and so glad that our sponsors were able to stick with us. And a lot of our RV reservations and ticket reservations, they all said, just keep, keep our money and just roll it over to the next year because we're hoping that this is just a pause button. Uh, and so I, I think that you will see the sanitation measures uh, will be changed for Balloon Fiesta as we're, uh, we've learned so much about the spread of this virus. Uh, as I said earlier, the safety uh, and well-being of our guests is first and foremost in our hearts and our minds. And so you'll probably see some changes in that, in that regard. But otherwise, I think it's going to be uh, pretty cool to see everyone be able to get together out at Balloon Fiesta Park once again uh, and celebrate this uh, largest balloon event in the world. I need to jump in here and point out, Glenn, that uh, the live picture, we did find some balloons up out on the west side. And that uh, mostly yellow one right there in the center, that's Judy Nakamura. She was on our show the other night. She was. So she is up on the west side flying bounce, uh, apparently uh, attempting to hit the target in the local balloon club competition. And I was just going to wrap up with Sam by saying, okay, Sam, nap time is over. Forget the siesta. It's time to go back to work for next year now. <laughs> yes. Uh, our staff has been working year-round to put on the, the event. And of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've been packaging and sending out a lot of the great merchandise that Lisa Mulder uh, and her team have put together. Uh, so we're excited about all that, but we really want to see your faces. We want to see you back here in Albuquerque next year. Sam Parks, Director of Operations for the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Thanks for joining us here on Balloon Fiesta Live. And I guess I'll see you in the office tomorrow morning. So uh, thanks for coming down. <laughs> thanks, Art. Appreciate you having thanks, me. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate you taking the time to do this. It's my pleasure. We'll see you soon, buddy. Take care, buddy. So along the lines of the whole idea of this being a big family, kind of that melancholy as we kind of wrap up Balloon Fiesta for 2020 here. Uh, last year, our reporter Ruth Lind was out with one of the board of directors, John Davis, and uh, they talked a little bit about that. And I thought that that was a really appropriate comment that John made. And so I'd like to just replay that for you now. Back. Yeah, that's the great thing about Fiesta is it is a giant family. We have, all of us know each other. We spent a lot of time together over a number of years. And we all come back together for a big family reunion once a year here in Albuquerque in October. And if you're watching this and you're not here, you really should be here. So you need to come to the Fiesta. We're coming up in a couple of years on our 50th Fiesta, which is gonna be a great celebration. And uh, maybe we'll even deck you out in some fancier stuff for the, for that one. <laughs> That's kind of scary, John. But uh, we appreciate what Fiesta Live TV has done for the Fiesta. And uh, you guys up there in the, in the tower, what you do for us. And appreciate all of it and all of you. Thank you. Wow. And uh, I don't know if you can get any fancier outfit than that hat Ruth was wearing last year. <laughs> Yeah, she was styling last year, I mean, no doubt about that. So it was really, uh, really nice. So it's, uh, it's time to start through some of those uh, thank yous here. Um, of course, we, oh, by the way, I was, I was going to mention this earlier, and I don't think I did. Last year on Balloon Fiesta Live, we put 40 hours worth of video on the online. And we had, at the end of the day of, of the week, we had about 700,000 viewers who had turned in over those 14 events. This year, doing shorter shows, we have only put 19 hours of airtime up online, but yet more than 500,000 of you have tuned in to check it out. And we think that's a, a fabulous number. We think that uh, yeah. we certainly appreciate all of you for tuning in and for sharing the uh, Balloon Fiesta Siesta 
sharing that whole family piece along. And I do want to show you the, um, we talked about moving the 49th on. We have the graphic for um, 2021. The idea here is, is that it's still time flies and we're moving the arrow from 2020 to 2021. And then of course you see 2022 is where the 50th shows up. And so uh, we're not making new bumper stickers, but I wanna make sure that you know the dates, October 2nd through the 10th in 2021, we plan to be back with the Time Flies event. And some of us may call it take two, but yeah. uh, we'll be doing something with that. And Glenn, I hope that we will be seeing you as well. I look forward to my 32nd year um, and the 33rd when we celebrate the 50th, so I'm not going anywhere. Well, that's great. And I hope that uh, folks do make a, uh, an opportunity to join in and check in with us. Last pitch for the balloonfiestastuff.com and the BF Live code. Um, so we just make sure that you have the opportunity to go ahead and uh, check that out. So before we uh, do our traditional ending, any uh, final thoughts, any final words on the week? Uh, just thanks to the crew for an outstanding job. You guys have made this work flawlessly. Um, it's looked extremely professional, I think. I've had a great time um, missing uh, seeing all my friends out in Albuquerque, Sam and so many of the board members and all the balloonists. But we'll get together again soon and uh, we'll get back to whatever new normal is going to be. So looking forward to that. And uh, thank you. I was going to add the same to our production team here, Windfire Productions, also running Studio 519. They are the public access channel here in Albuquerque on Comcast. And if you would like to do some fabulous work here, they are willing to help you. And I can't recommend them more highly as a team to work with. So with so that, it, yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's time, time to sir. raise a glass. It's time to raise a glass and do like we always do at the end of the show and we bring in the uh, balloonist prayer. So we are actually gonna put that on the screen so folks can okay. see it as well. So uh, lift your glass and join in with us. May the winds, May the winds welcome, welcome you, with, you softness. with softness. May the sun, May the sun bless, you bless you with its warm hands. hands. May, you fly May you fly so high, so high and, and so well that God joins you, joins in, your you laughter in your laughter and, and sets, sets you gently, gently back into the loving, the arms, loving arms of, of Mother, Mother Earth. Earth. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Slangeva. Thank you very much, folks. We appreciate your joining in, and we'll see you again next year for Balloon Fiesta Live, the 49th edition. They say time flies when you're having fun. So how about joining us and thousands of visitors from around the world to enjoy the magic of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta? Nine days of events. to come experience the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Always in October, always in Albuquerque. See you in 2021. You've been watching Balloon Fiesta Live, Siesta Edition, powered by XTO Energy, a subsidiary of ExxonMobil. Always in October and always in Albuquerque, the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta presented by Canon is the world's premier ballooning event. This program is a production of AIBF Inc.